Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Rishabh. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the speakers, for making time for this presentation. Um, uh, the, uh, we'll have a session on India Industrial Land Bank. This uh, uh, is a platform for discovery of land across uh, the country. Uh, so we largely showcase industrial land parcels uh, across all the states in India. Uh, we have with us Modit Dobal from Indospace, Prasad Lani from uh, Kade City, and uh, Wadgun George from uh, uh, Sri City. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, we'll start, I'll give a short presentation and we'll keep it interactive. Um, uh, we'll have a couple of questions that we would like to reflect with our speakers, uh, since the, uh, like the audience is probably more attuned um, and we probably know each other, uh, we'd probably have a session to discuss what are the possibilities that um, we have in the food processing space, etc. So we'll start, I think. Uh, so just a brief about India Industrial Land Bank. It's a national GIS-based repository of industrial land. Currently, we have close to around 7.8 lakh hectare of land on the portal. Um, this is across all uh, the states, uh, about 35 states, and 4,800 parks are listed, uh, which include both public parks and private parks. Uh, the key objective of having a portal like this is to uh, have remote decision making um, and support the investors for all kinds of um, uh, decisions that they can take sitting from abroad. Um, this is integrated with all the major portals like National Single Window System, PM Gati Shakti, etc. Uh, this is what the portal looks like. So you would see the yellow dots on the screen are basically all the industrial parks. Uh, this largely can be zoomed in and you find all the individual parks with plot boundaries mapped. Uh, on the left hand side you find uh, various layers like agriculture, horticulture, mineral production, etc. On the right hand side uh, there are uh, classifications based on sectors like automobiles, biotechnology, uh, capital goods. When you zoom into uh, uh, one of these you'll find all the plots etc. In terms of the food processing parks we have close to around 167 parks um, uh, along with uh, 29 separate parks under Ministry of Food Processing Industries. The portal also houses the cold storage facilities which are uh, put on um, by various ministries and various GIS layers. Um, the blue dots on the portal basically demarcates the cold storage facilities. Uh, this is again to help you uh, make decisions when you are looking at uh, uh, where to invest, where to park your uh, food processing unit. Uh, if you click on any of the blue dots, you also find out the name, the details and the contact details of uh, the particular cold storage unit. Apart from this, to support the food processing unit, uh, we also have layers of agriculture and horticulture crops. So these are GIS layers which tells you where, how much of uh, a particular agriculture commodity grows, what is the production level. These are again taken from all the government databases from Ministry of Agriculture and Horticulture. That's largely it uh, from a food processing point of view for IALB. Um, I would probably now, uh, yeah, uh, we'll engage in a discussion with our speakers and uh, yeah, maybe start off with a round of introduction and then go into a couple of questions to make the session a little more interactive. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll just start maybe. Uh, yeah, thank you. So maybe uh, we can start with a round of introduction, Modit, then Prasad, then George. I think we can start it like that and then we can have a round of discussion on um, stuff that we can do around food processing. Yeah, Modit. Thank you, Rishabh. So uh, I'm Modit and I'm based out of Bombay and I head uh, business development strategy and uh, a large account relationships uh, for my company, Indospace. And Indospace, as you may be aware, is uh, one of the largest developers of plug-and-play industrial and logistics parks. Yeah. 
Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rishabh, for having us here for this session. Uh, my name is Prasad Lahane. I look after the sales and marketing of project Khed City. Uh, about Khed City, Khed City is uh, Pune's integrated industrial township where we are developing about 4,200 acres of land and inviting industries. And of course, food processing also one of the sectors where we are eyeing on as we already have a couple of good anchor units at Khed City. And yes, we look forward to have more and more interest uh, as far as food processing or agro-based industries are concerned. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, this is Borgen George from Sri City. Uh, let me first thank the uh, Ministry of Food Processing and Invest India for giving us this opportunity. Sri City is one of the India's uh, largest integrated business city in it, uh, uh, which it's more of a city uh, providing industrial space and a lifestyle zone. So currently we have about 220 companies, mostly the multinational companies. Uh, being a multi-product industrial park, we have a quite a few food processing companies also, mostly the multinational companies. And um, uh, also the, the different uh, infrastructures and the world-class facilities that we have provided, we have become now the most preferred location for any products to, to come in. So we'll discuss this. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll start uh, this time from George. I think uh, you can, uh, we can start off with uh, the kind of facilities and since we are in the, in the food, uh, uh, food festival, uh, we can probably focus on um, what are the facilities that are available um, uh, uh, for industries in general and if you can specify something for food, uh, in uh, food processing units in particular, that will be useful. Yeah, thanks, Mr. See, basically, Rishabh, what I feel is, you know, when you talk about an industrial land bank, yep. uh, providing an industrial space is one side, but you're providing it with a great ecosystem is very important. Now, uh, we have uh, been able to get good investments from the Mondelez, the largest, the Cadbury's, the largest unit in Asia is in India, that's one in Sri City. And uh, we were able to have Pepsi in terms of the... Uh, the, um, the Pepsi's and we have the Kali Sparkling, uh, the Tata Smart Foods, uh, Kellogg's, you know, quite a name of few we already have on board with us. So what we noticed is the, the founders of Sri City had a great vision. So that helped in, in attracting these investments on board. Um, so we ensured that uh, creating one industrial park, number two, to create a good ecosystem, you know, for them to come on board. So when I talk about ecosystem, uh, the the model that the founders were deciding is to create a good lifestyle. So, you know, you have an industrial park, close to that we have, uh, we got about three universities inside, two schools and hospitals, the residential units, the shopping arcades. All this will help. As I mentioned, it's a city by itself, right? So it creates a motivation for them to, to make an investment there. And number two, there has been a good support by the state government as well. So whichever the government that has come in. Uh, when you look at from the food processing side of it, the state, uh, technically we fall into the state of Andhra Pradesh, though we're very close to Chennai, you know, just about an hour and a half drive from the Chennai airport. Uh, the state government has been very supportive and the state being, uh, you know, one of the, the uh, having the most potential, it has been considered as the, uh, the fruit bowl of India, you know, so we have... Uh, uh, right from the mangoes to, to bananas to chilies, and, and they're also a good platform for the, the aquaculture. The so state offers a great advantage for the food processing companies to be in there. So that had also had helped in, in, in attracting these investment into Sri City. So overall, as I was mentioning to you, uh, giving a location with an industrial park should come with a great ecosystem, and that definitely helps which I believe the Sri City founders have been, had a great vision to get this accomplished, and now we have reasonably been successful on that. Sure. Um, Prasad, any uh, inputs here on the, uh, we can also talk about the basic infrastructure uh, that a, 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 a private park like your, of, yours offer. Um, right, 
So, uh, as I said that we are located in Pune, so this project is basically visioned by uh, the great Mr. Baba Kalyani and this project is a joint venture between MIDC and Kalyani groups. Now, the Kalyani group is pioneer in terms of as an industrial powerhouse and MIDC we know that it's a Maharashtra Industrial Development Corporation, so which is a state nodal agency which looks after the industrial, uh, you know, infrastructure development. So this, uh, through this project, we are setting a good benchmark or a setting, setting a good example, like it's a synergy between a government and a private company, which adds value in terms of the overall infrastructure development. And at the end, it benefits the customers. And our customers are preferably the multinationals who are preferring these locations. Now, uh, Pune, yes, was known as a auto city. But now gone are those days, like, you know, the conducive environment in Pune, the other factors, skill set, the overall infrastructure. So all it is making a good location or a preferred destination for all sectoral industries. So uh, although we have developed around uh, 1,400 acres out of total 4,200 acres, we take a pride to tell uh, we, ha we are surrounded by largely OEMs in the auto sector, right? But our anchor customer as of now is from the food processing. So that's a very, you know, interesting part because Mars, uh, now we eat the ch ch chocolate sneaker. So that is made in Khed City. So they are there set up, uh, they have set up on almost 40 acres of land and they are there working since 2015-16. So in fact, during COVID also as an essential unit, they were functioning very nicely. So this is very interesting, like a food processing industry also gets attracted by the overall ecosystem of the infrastructure. At the same time, Pune is known as a farmland, as a milk producing, or you know, there are a lot of uh, milk belts in and around the project. So we have got another interesting client, which is India's largest milk producing company named Amul. Mm -hmm. So Amul is also now there setting up their ice cream facility. So this facility will also get commenced uh, from this year on the eve of this Vallabhbhai Patel's Jayanti. So they are also planning to start that production from that facility from October. So these are the major two anchor customers situated at Khed City. Although the city is envisioned or, you know, is likely be preferred by the auto OEMs or their suppliers or the engineering companies because the overall ecosystem is mainly meant for them. But now, Industries, they don't bother about which sector they, you know, are surrounded by. What they want is a good set of infrastructure. And that's what we are delivering to all our customers, being it good internal road network, being it power substation, good quality power, water infrastructure, which is again a very essential uh, raw material or inputs or for, you know, for the food processing industry. So what kind of uh, portability or what uh, the quality of water that we are supplying to food industries is well appreciated. And uh, the overall management of Khed City at uh, the developer is basically Khed Economic Infrastructure Private Limited. And the name is, the name of the project is Khed City. But the overall support at this expert level, like from various departments. So we are actually, uh, you know, uh, working on this ease of doing business where we are helping all our customers, not only because selling land is not only, of course, that's a business, but that's not the attitude. The attitude is to make them happy, handhold them, not only till the time they get productionized, but also after sales, like since we are a developer, we have to maintain the project. We have to maintain that quality. So, so, so the similar way they are maintaining their quality at their facility. So it is also, you know, a responsibility of a developer to maintain that infrastructure, give the promises, you know, promise to the give a delivery of the promises given to them. And that's how, you know, is being appreciated by the, uh, not only food processing, but all other industries coming, you know, or in and uh, they are setting up in Pune city for that matter. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Prasad. Mohit, I think you told us about the plug and play uh, 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 Indospace has uh, this thing. I mean, can you also zoom in on that and probably also talk about a little bit on from a startup uh, uh, this thing, probably because they may also uh, uh, value uh, that. And we see a lot of startups in the food processing space uh, that are coming up. But yeah, before that, yeah, if you can also talk about the basic infrastructure facilities there. Sure. So. I'll just like to start by basically uh, sharing with you that uh, you know our model is, is is slightly different from what we have at Sri City or Cade City. Uh, so Indospace uh, is basically a private equity platform, and 
and we have sponsors in Everstone Private Equity and Realterm, which is a very large US-based private equity company specializing in building international quality assets across North America. We also have GLP, which is the fourth largest investor. And uh, so, so we have found uh, extreme success in terms of uh, building a plug-and-play infrastructure, whether it comes to manufacturing facilities or warehousing facilities across the country. And uh, so we are sector agnostic, we are location agnostic, and our focus is, is to continue and invest in uh, cities which uh, double up as manufacturing and consum consumption hubs. So, so we have presence in all the top 10, 11, uh, you know, big cities in India because they double up as uh, preferred manufacturing destinations. They also double up as key consumption locations and therefore they are also very relevant for the warehousing market. Uh, so basically our model is dif different in the sense that uh, we build, uh, you know, these plug and play solutions, uh, build to suit solutions. Uh, which are tailor-made to, you know, specific uh, industry requirements, sector requirements. And then we actually give it on long lease. So, you know, it's an asset light rental factory or a rental warehouse model that we, that we have. And uh, across uh, the, the tenant pool that we have, uh, you know, we have close to 140 plus customers. We have 80 plus manufacturing companies. We have presence in 11 cities and, you know, we have uh, invested close to about $3 billion of capital in building these assets across the country. Uh, we have been able to build and lease close to about 30 million square feet. There is another 30 million square feet which is in different stages of development. Uh, within these uh, 80 manufacturing companies that we have within our portfolio, roughly 50% of this actually comes from the auto sector where we have been able to build an ecosystem for auto ancillaries to, you know, feed into the auto OEMs on a just-in-time basis. We also have, you know, massive growing presence in the electronic sector, uh, you know, in locations like Chennai, Pune, Delhi, NCR, Ahmedabad. So, you know, the, the focus is to build these plug-and-play facilities which have shorter gestations, which can be tailor-made, which are, you know, which comply to international quality, are in the best of locations and are, you know, 100% ESG compliant. So, you know, the infrastructure that we build is, uh, you know, IGBC platinum certified, uh, you know, industrial and warehousing parks. And these are also edge advanced uh, parks, right? And, and so, and there are a bunch of things that we do on the ESG side, you know, including, uh, you know, uh, healthcare solutions for for our tenants, for our uh, you know the communities which surround us, sustainable waste management programs, etc. So so for the tenant, uh, for the client, it's it's a plug and play infra, right? When it comes to common infra, and then he has options to either go for a, a plug and play solution, which is kind of ready to move in for requirements which are fairly standard. And if the requirements are very unique or complex or large, then we have a built to suit development uh, project or a program where the gestations could be slightly higher, you know, 10 to 12 months. Uh, so these are, you know, some of the, the key advantages and the, the value proposition when it comes to indoor space. Uh, so what we have seen is that uh, food processing center, uh, you know, sector is also ramping up with, especially, you know, with the production linked incentives being announced and and a lot of uh, companies looking at setting up micro factories and the trend is also to be as close as possible to, you know, ports. It's also, you know, be as close as possible to the consumption markets because with uh, digitization of trade, uh, you know, e-commerce, uh, you know, time becomes a strategic advantage. Time not only in terms of setting up the factory, but also time in terms of serving your end customers. And therefore, the, the wide range of network that we have been able to build across 11 cities uh, also helps customers in setting up micro factories in different markets. So gone are those, those days there where, you know, you would have one factory in South and uh, maybe, you know, supply to entire India or even look at exports, 
right? Because even in terms of exports, uh, you know, West ports have connective, much improved connectivity to, uh, say, for example, a US or a Europe compared to the South India ports. South India ports have advantage in terms of Southeast Asian countries, right? So, so now the idea is to optimize uh, you know, your transportation times, your transportation costs from your suppliers to your customers, uh, you know, optimize raw material availability, right? And also, you know, maintain the service levels when you are serving the domestic market as well. So, so I think uh, that's something that uh, is a unique value proposition with Indospace, you know, our asset light offerings that we have and the network that we have been able to build. Uh, there are two case studies, uh, very recent, so, uh, you know, so we are building a Coke's uh, concentrate factory, so it's a factory that we are building for Coke US in uh, Ahmedabad, uh, 45 kilometers from the, uh, the city, and typically, you know, for, for that scale of our investment, so it's a 3 lakh square feet facility, end-to-end, build-to-suit that we are doing for Coke they would have typically gone and, you know, bought land and look at, you know, uh, doing it themselves. But what we see is that there's a change in trend in terms of even some of these big majors looking at uh, asset light, plug and play in a, in a very, very big way. The other example that I would want to quote is uh, a startup company. Uh, they are into food processing, so they are uh, basically making healthy snacks and we are building uh, a factory for them uh, close to JNPT, so in our park in Kapoli. So this is just 45 kilometers from the port. Uh, their large focus is to do exports, and they also have import dependency in terms of the raw, raw material that comes in, and therefore they have wanted a location which is closer to the port, but also gives them uh, you know, good export connectivity to the US and the Europe markets. So, yeah, so, so this is our, you know, limited experience in the food processing sector. But like I said, we are sector agnostic and, uh, you know, there are, uh, of course, you know, auto electronics are dominant sectors, but then uh, there are other 10, 12 sectors, which are fast growing sectors where we are now seeing some really, really good traction, including the food processing sector. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Mudit. So thank you so, so much for those insights. I think uh, so now would want uh, largely. I think we've had these discussions in like in uh, on one to one, but wanted to also since all three of you here and there's a lot of uh, experience on the on the dais. Uh, I mean, you must be interacting with a lot of investors and a lot of uh, stakeholders who want to set up these parks, uh, spe uh, specifically from outside India. And uh, ESG is something that we are uh, hearing, but uh, there may be other demands and other things. I would want you to probably specify on uh, certain things in terms of what are the e uh, things that they look for uh, when they're looking for land uh, uh, discovery and uh, uh, and this can go in I think uh, George can talk about the social infrastructure part of things um, or anything in specific in terms of the compliance of the park and those kind of things but I would want some specifics uh, on on these things George we'll start with you maybe yeah sure sure yeah uh, you're right. In fact, uh, when we started uh, Sri City, the primary offering, so what we were doing is the, the land space. Now, uh, what had happened uh, down the line is that uh, off with a lot of OEMs, everybody coming in. Even the, the multinational companies, when they're coming, the preference now goes to similar to the indoor space model. You know, they, they want to build the suit, ready built space to come in. Um, also, we've been getting a lot of uh, inquiries even the suppliers, you know, for example, we have uh, Daikin air conditioners and a lot of suppliers, not just the Indian suppliers, even the, the Japanese and the multinational suppliers wanting to set base. So they don't want to take a land space. They want built to suit or, you know, the ready built factory options is what they were looking at. So. Keeping that in mind, then we started working on those models as well. Though we are not expertise in those space, but uh, we wanted to to take care of our customer, their requirements, you know, their, their inquiries. So we started getting into the concept of RBFs, ready-built factories. This is mainly to support 
the, the startups or mainly to support those suppliers. We started doing it more for the suppliers to support the OEMs inside Sri City. And um, then we, we, we noticed that a lot of MNCs also wanting to go for the similar model, the sort of built to suit concepts and models. So we are all now open to that, uh, somebody wanting to start with a 20,000 or 50,000 uh, square feet factory they want to go in. So we started working on that model now. And uh, so the two things they look at, one, it, it helps them not too much into the, the capex. Uh, number two, it will help them with the immediate startup in somebody wanting 20, 30,000 with the uh, RBF concept, they have an immediate startup. So that is one area where you know we, we found uh, with the customers uh, a little different inquiry than what we were primarily offering. Uh, number two, as, as I mentioned, uh, see, we have a great advantage in terms of the connectivity. And that has been one of the factors that we did reasonably very well. Just across uh, the National Highway 16, which is part of the Golden Quadrilateral National Highway of India, uh, that connects to all major parts of uh, the city, all major cities in India. Also, uh, the same national highway, the, and in fact, I would say Sri City would be the only industrial park that can connect you to a multiple seaport just across the same national highway. The north, we have the Krishna Patnam, the south, we have the Katupalli, Ennore, and further down, we have Chennai. So we have so, uh, four seaports to, to support you in terms of the exports. And also, the, the highways connects you, helps you. It's, it's, it's geographically located in such a way. Uh, any investment, if somebody is looking at us as a southern region, uh, this location will help you covering most of the southern states because we're just being at the border between Andhra and Tamil Nadu. So obviously it takes care of both and also further down Kerala and Telangana and Karnataka on the other side. And, and further, further north on the eastern side as well. So uh, as a location-wise, it's been a huge and big advantage. But when the companies approach, the requirement would be, you know, they don't want huge, you know, they, they want a built to suit uh, RBF concept and we have now got onto that. So with this connectivity and all those things, it helps. Uh, the other thing that they were looking at is the investors, uh, as I mentioned, uh, though the founders already had this in their mind, it, it matched with the investors' uh, requirement because they, they need a good uh, social infra inside three cities. So, we, start, we, we started working on it well ahead. So now we have a uh, good residential, the shopping arcade. Uh, so slowly we are bringing more and more. We are now the second largest Japanese enclave in India. We've got about 30 Japanese companies on board. So obviously the requirements for them comes in with a lot of entertainment and leisure. So we started with the, you know, the, go, the golf driving range and all that. So slowly, I mean, things don't happen overnight, but slowly we're trying to bring in more and more uh, to support their preference and inquiries. Uh, we, we are now considered to be, uh, we are now the, uh, the cool capital of India. The big reason being we have a lot of air conditioning manufacturers on board with us. So we have Daikin, we have Blue Star, we have Havels, uh, the contract manufacturers like Amber and Epax, they're also on board. So eventually we're expecting by 2028, 20, 29, close to 50% of the air conditioners manufactured in India would be manufactured out of Sri City. So we're looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, but as I mentioned to you, we have to work based on the preference and inquiries of the customer. It has come to that model. Thank you so much. So it becomes very easy for them to, you know, get the compliances related to environment done and get going. And on top of it, we also uh, project or promote our park as a green, in green industrial park wherein uh, we, don't, uh, we don't invite the industries which are obnoxious or hazardous in nature. And we, as such, we have a lot of water bodies inside the project, which we are preserving to recharge the ground levels. And it's a part of our rainwater harvesting project. So that's an important aspect or, you know, the fe feature which generally uh, industries demands. And as Borgan said, uh, they have a Japanese cluster. Yes, similar uh, observation. We are also observing like Koreans are now preferring Pune. Japanese, yes, it is taken by Southern India. Uh, they have a special love about the Chennai and all that part. But yes, Koreans, Germans, they have a love for Pune. And as a part of it, we are also bringing a lot of social infrastructure elements. Uh, now we have started. Uh, we have, uh, as a part of it, we have already earmarked our land parcels to have those social elements in place, being it business hotels, 
recreation facilities. Now Koreans, Japanese, they love golf. Like if it is golf, they will leave any things aside and they will invest uh, wherever golf course is there. So we are also now seriously thinking to have some something, you know, uh, social infrastructure, something like golf course, sports academy. And yes, working on it, and apart from that, the normal uh, social infrastructure uh, requirements like residential, schools, health clinics, those are also uh, are there on the card uh, in terms of, you know, the future development or the land which, which are coming in the phases to come. So that is also uh, the required, uh, you know, one of the requirements, special, yes, the first basic thing is road, water, and, you know, elect uh, electricity, yes, and now, you know, we say that they'll mange more, so customer also wants more. They want more and more infrastructure, being it now industrial gas lines, being it ICT network, and apart from that, the social, you know, leisure activity, so that they also find it as it is their city. Yeah. You know, in the name of the project, we are calling it as a city, so definitely those elements will be there, and they want to be a belonging, or they, we call them as a family. So we always, whenever, uh, you know, sign any agreement, we invite them, you know, to Khed City family. So that's kind of a infrastructure now we have plans for, and now we are working on it. Soon it will be the reality. Yeah, so, so for, with our experience, what, uh, what we are seeing uh, in terms of uh, how the industrial requirements are evolving is, one is uh, uh, there is there has been a massive uptake in terms of preference towards industrial leasing transactions. Uh, one significant trend that we have seen is that uh, more and more companies are now preferring uh, the asset light way, uh, rather you know having a asset heavy approach. And this is all uh, largely linked to you know time being a strategic advantage. Uh, the PLI timelines, you know, which have production timelines for the OEMs, which essentially cascades to, you know, timelines for the suppliers and for suppliers, then, you know, starting early becomes a strategic advantage. So, so increasingly, that's a trend that we are seeing. Uh, we are also seeing that uh, countries uh, uh, like Japan, Taiwan, Korea, uh, previously had a very asset heavy approach where investors wanted to own land and now increasingly these countries are also looking at investing in asset light facilities. Uh, what we also see is, uh, uh, you know, ESG is becoming more and more of a strategic advantage. And uh, and basically we see this as a clean, uh, you know, differentiator for ourselves. Uh, because most of uh, the large, uh, you know, companies that we have within our portfolio uh, have their own net zero goals. And within their own net zero goals, they have their own real estate goals in terms of, uh, you know, IGBC platinum certification, you know, solar rooftop soaring, uh, uh, solar rooftop uh, solutions, so on and so forth. So, so I think ESG is seen as a clean differentiator. Uh, what we also see is uh, uh, customers specifically looking at asset light options uh, want to be in the best of locations. Uh, so they might uh, want to pay slightly higher rent for a superior location. So uh, because, you know, when you go with land, then the land which is generally made available by the government and uh, you know, so there are incentives which are attached to, you know, say for example, uh, a zone D category land versus a zone A category. But with specifically with, uh, you know, asset light options, uh, customers would want to be in a zone A category uh, because for them proximity to the OEM is important, proximity to the market is important, proximity to the suppliers is important. And therefore, they want to be in the most optimal location. They would also want to have uh, multiple, uh, you know, expansion options uh, across the country and uh, within the same park itself. So, so there are a lot of times when we, you know, do uh, initial deal, which is, you know, phase one. And then, you know, they have a no right uh, to uh, right to refusal for you know, within a given timeline to, to expand within the same park. If, if, if that timeline 
vanishes, you know, if they are not able to commit, then, you know, we have to give them expansion options within the same city itself, maybe a different park. So I think uh, people are looking at these kind of models. And uh, yeah, so, so I think these are some of the visible trends. Uh, one very visible trend that we are also seeing is uh, that, you know, initially plug and play was largely about light manufacturing and assembly. But now more and more companies as they're looking at doing more local value addition are also looking at more advanced manufacturing through asset light uh, built to suit facilities. Uh, there are some companies who have uh, large scale requirements and we have been in touch with those companies, you know, who have say for example, 50 acre kind of a requirement. So they would want to have flexibility in terms of starting asset light but they would want an option of uh, asset uh, buyout at some point of time. So, you know, when the lease expires, they would want an option of buying the asset. So, you know, so, yeah, so they want that flexibility as well. So, so I think these are some of the visible trends uh, that we are seeing in the, in, the, in the industrial rental space. Yeah. yeah thank you so much. I think uh, that was very helpful. I think uh, I would just uh, want to see if there are any questions by anyone. I um, um, think we've discussed quite a few topics. Um, but uh, yeah, if there are any, I mean, we can take uh, these um, or else, yeah. I have a question. Sure. Like, uh, there are uh, government parks and private parks, right? Yeah. So uh, if we compare the uh, government parks and private parks, how cost effective it is for the uh, industries like, you know, uh, daily industries for small scale or large scale? Mm. How cost competitive it is? So it would largely depend on the location, um, where the park is located or where the uh, land is located. Um, but I would, uh, I mean, I think uh, uh, that that is probably the the uh, sole uh, this thing. But if anyone would want to take that, yeah, Prasad if or Judge. Yeah, let me try, okay, <laughs> because it's a, it's a decision-making kind of a question. But yes, um, see, government and private, uh, both, are, uh, both have their own added advantage as well as disadvantages, okay. Now, if you want quality, private park definitely delivers it, but at cost, okay. So you should be ready enough to, you know, bear that cost if in case you want a quality. Now, in case of uh, private park, now I'll talk about private park since we are private park. So what we deliver over and above what, uh, you know, government parks or for that matter, in our case, MIDC delivers. So it's a gated community. In government parks, it's not a gated community. So you are accountable, you are responsible to man the or the gate the, you know, park. So the pre-sale activities and post-sale activities. Here there is a huge difference between government parks and private parks. Government parks, yes, pre-sale activities, they will put a red carpet, everything for you. Same is what private parks also does. But after sales, what are the daily challenges? There is a lack in terms of government parks. But here, private parks, you are there in their family, right? So you have to take care of their all issues, all op operational day-to-day -day facility related, maintenance related issues. So th that plays a role when it comes to a private park. But again, as I said, these are the service related activities. So it comes at a cost. There you don't get cost, but you don't get service as well. Right? So these are the, these are the few points where, you know, government... Uh, and as far as, uh, if it is a location, as uh, Rishabh rightly said, that location-wise, the costing varies. But in many of the cities now, the private parks are just next to the government offices or government parks. So there is not much of a difference. Although I would put that government parks will always higher in terms of prices at first. Later on, recurring, they may not be, but recurring, again, at recurring cost, even if it is at private park, but it gives you value. It gives you services over a period of time. So one-time cost, yes, you may find government offices, uh, private offices uh, less, but uh, definitely it adds value over a period.
facilities, taking care of everything, like uh, there are schools, there are facilities, housing and everything. And uh, so if there is any sort of uh, new avenues coming to Uttar Pradesh or is there anything there? I leave it to uh, Rishabh boldly because I belong from Maharashtra, he from uh, No, I think uh, it, it largely depends on the local factors, etc. I think there's a lot that, uh, I mean, not only UP, but in nearby other states, etc. Uh, I think there, uh, there are multiple projects, like the Jaywar one that just came up, I think the entire region got affected. Uh, so, I think it, uh, it depends on the kind of, uh, uh, yeah, the local factors again. And then, I think the private park developers probably have a... Uh, uh, like I think they can uh, offer better incentives financially um, uh, to the local people. I think that that may be one uh, thing. Also, the process may be easier with uh, uh, with them is what something that I can probably put my finger on. But yeah, we can discuss. I think there's there's a lot of uh, uh, scope for if you can specify the regions, etc. I think we can take it bilaterally. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we'll, we'll stop there. I think the next panelists are also waiting. So thank you so much uh, uh, to all the panelists and uh, speakers. I think th we had some very interesting answers and uh, some. Uh, um, thank you for coming and uh, making this a success. I think if you can pass on those tokens, I think. We would like to have a picture, that's okay. Huh? <laughs>